Show and Podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi, and this is podcast episode number 1,102. And boy, do we have a good one planned for you today. We have two guests in the studio, not just one, two. Each day is an opportunity to deliver compassion, empathy, and love for care partners at home. Rodney Burris and Randy Platt, two health care leaders, turned their personal stories of caregiving and love into a companion home care company. Gentlemen, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast. Great, great to be here, Rick. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Rick. Why don't we start with Randy? Tell me a little bit about your path to this firm. You know, a little bit about your background, then Rodney will pick you up and ask the same thing. Okay, so kicks off. Thanks, Rick. Uh, it's a, it's a long story, but I'll make it brief. Okay. Uh, over thirty years in healthcare, uh, working in both the acute care hospital side and also the post acute care side. Um, but frankly, it's the personal lives that we touch each and every day, and what has happened in my family that I think brought uh, both Rodney and I together to start uh, Care Partners at Home and, and the broader company. Right. And Rodney, what's your story? So uh, I have half of Randy at 15 years of healthcare experience from, um, you know, a temp medical records clerk to uh, regional roles to executive and board roles to ownership. Um, but really, my purpose started uh, as a patient. Um, I consider myself a professional patient, and I've been What blessed. do you mean by that? So I've had a lot of uh, bed days in the hospital. Okay. Uh, you know, 14 surgical interventions, and uh, the, the calling for me really occurred when I recognized the power of human connection. So one stranger caring for another in a moment of crisis. Right. So um, we're going to talk about the business model, uh, but before we do that, did you guys come to this idea together? Did you come to it independently and then you came together? How did that happen? Actually, it came as an independent thought process and a brain trust for actually Rodney. And I was in the process of uh, moving into another career uh, path as a leader. And Rodney, Rodney approached me with the idea just to brainstorm with him about it. And as we talked more and more, we decided that it would be good to uh, to partner. So okay. uh, we both gave up our uh, roles and moved into a partnership and made personal investments, both with our families and with each other. So, so Rodney, why did you go to Randy as an advisor or to bounce this idea off of him? Great, great question. So uh, Randy keeps this quiet, but uh, he, he's actually a former boss of mine. And when I look at that 15 years in my career, really under his tutelage, I had more personal and professional growth than I had ever had. Oh, and wow. so, you know, he's a mentor in my life, great deal of respect, and he was one who really allowed me to um, uh, spread my wings and make mistakes. And uh, that guidance really was what brought me back to him saying, hey, here's, here's an idea, I'd like your involvement. So what did you see in the marketplace? And then tell us, you can start and then you can add to it, Randy. Um, what did you see in the marketplace that's, that made you want to go and say, hey, this care partners at home idea I think is a business? Uh, fragmentation. Okay. So everything outside of the facilities, uh, hospital skilled nursing facilities, you know, we've all had family members go through those crises or ourselves go through the crisis of being discharged and really um, uh, not knowing what the next step is or who's going to help. And uh, couple that with the uh, population, uh, our, our beloved older adults. Mm. Um, they are living longer, they're sicker, they want to age in place and home. And, you know, in our minds, that takes a village. And so the idea came from all of the experiences in the post-acute market which was physician practices home health hospice home care and really said what can we build to build a village around people in their homes really focused on human connection and um, the defragmentation mm -hmm. so he, Rodney went through a couple things real quickly home hospice and and home health care what is it that you guys do for people what is your delivery of service Randy well, I, th I think we actually make a difference in their lives is what okay. fundamentally is what By we do. By doing what? So w when you looked at the business, people might think we were a little crazy because there are over 200 home care private duty companion companies in Orange County alone. Wow. And what that means is, is we're actually in the home anywhere from a number of short hours a day to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is a product that is delivered uh, uninsured. People pay privately for the services. Uh, Long-term care insurance companies, if a policy exists with an individual, uh, might pay some supplement per day for that service. Um, but the, the way the care is delivered is, is somewhat unique. Um, with 200 agencies out there, Rodney and I made it a, a promise to one another and to the team that we would actually focus on who we bring into the company their personal stories, their why, 
um, has to be very evident to us. And that's how we've built the base of caregivers. That's how we built the, the associates we have on our team. They have to connect with us. They have to connect with the spirit of what it takes to care for someone else because it, it is a it is a giving profession. Right. And you can't expect anything from it. The beauty is, in my mind, and I think in Rodney's mind, is when somebody does provide that care and they see the exchange they have with that patient, that client, that, that human being, they learn so much. So the concept of give-get, which, mm -hmm. Rick, I know you understand quite well, it happens often. Tough days some days for caregivers. They're doing a lot of heavy lifting with clients, and I mean heavy lifting not only physically but psychosocially. And so our caregivers are touching them spiritually, um, psychosocially, and in turn they get the same back from those clients often. Um, they learn a lot. So it's an exchange, and, and we pride ourselves on that. I think um, hiring for culture um, is fundamentally the most important thing we do. And it's said all too often, I think, in businesses, and I'll, uh, I'll end here, but I think it has to be true and it has to come from the individual. So we spend our time teaching our team how to do that. So uh, in a simple answer to a difficult question, how do you guys ensure that you hire for culture? Um it's about finding their purpose and their calling. I Do mean, you ask them that? In a number of different ways. Okay. A lot of times it's drawn out. I'll tell you real quick an experience we had earlier. A new Please. personal attendant came in, was there for orientation, had already passed our extensive screening and background, and she felt con compelled to tell Randy and I her personal story just after watching our videos. And her personal story was that of losing a son oh at a young age wow. and then almost losing a daughter. And, and talking about how that brought her into her God-given gift, which is to stay strong in faith and care for others who are going through what she went through personally. Uh, you know, to us, that, that's the type of powerful story that you realize this is somebody who's capable of having that love, empathy, and compassion going in and taking, someone, taking care of someone else who's going through something else mm -hmm. or a loved one who's watching you know, one of their loved ones go through something else. Right. Before we came on the show, Rodney and I, we were talking the, the the responsibility that you guys have in putting people in people's homes is a very serious responsibility, right? It is. And and, um, and so we just want to get that out. The other thing is, I, I noticed that on your website you talked about the videos, and, and you very much put your mission, vision, and values out front of the company. And, and are you finding that is helping to attract? In that Lee's example, it certainly did. But are you finding by being that forward with your views that it's bringing people to you that might be able to be hired into the culture more easily? Absolutely. I think it actually is causing us to hire um, the right people or attract the right people to hire. And I think it's also affecting how clients look at us. Okay. Um, as we've grown over the last 18 months, it's pretty evident um, we're getting some traction. Uh, with the website, people are yelping, which is a you know traditional thing to do these days. <laughs> Look at us! But man. they're drawn in. They're drawn in um, by our stories, and and I know when those videos were done, Rodney and I, um, pretty humble, pretty humble, pretty humble guys. But at the end of the day, we thought, oh, these videos will be fine. Those videos have been valuable in so many ways because they're 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 true, they're genuine, and I think. That's what we look to attract in return. And I, what I will say in the end, Rodney shared that story about that caregiver today um, who was orienting with us and who watched our videos. Um, she completely connected um, with Rodney's video and saw in his heart and in his eyes and how he told his story that she herself had the emotional intelligence to connect with that. And I think that's one of the fundamental issues. It's not about your skill set per se or your education. It's about your emotional intelligence. And then mm -hmm. we can train you from there. Wow. And do you want to add anything to that, Rodney? That was really eloquent. I, you don't have to, but... He's always... That's the presence that Randy brings. Right, yeah. And, you kind of get you know, caught up in it. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would say is uh, you asked the question of are we finding um, success in being blunt? I don't feel that it's blunt in asking somebody for personal stories because it, it just... They seem... We seem to create an environment that feels safe and they just are compelled to share, sometimes during the interview, sometimes right. during orientation, sometimes in a group setting where you've got a lot of tears. Uh, those, th that's, you know, an ep the epitome in my mind and Randy's mind of, of uh, Simon Sinek, start with the why, right? Yes, right. We've created a vision and right. people are drawn and attracted to that and they're connecting with the, the values because they're living them. Right, and, and this isn't just an academic conversation. In the 16 months that you've been in business, h how much have you scaled your firm? So our, our firm scaled from uh, <laughs> it, tremendously. We, we have over 
220 associates in the company. We started with three, basically, after we wrote the Articles of Incorporation in June of 16. Um, we went from, and we're, we're proud to say this is a private company, we, we built $3,000 of revenue in 2016. Good we job. built <laughs> over $1.3 million in our small little company in 2017, and we'll probably exceed 600 percent growth wow. in 2018 wow so um a lot of work uh, goes into that and we've diversified and and while we don't want to get off on a tangent we're an integrated health delivery system and what that means is, is we started with home care yes but we also help people find board and cares and assisted livings through our placement division for mm -hmm. senior living placement we do independent case management which helps families navigate the complexities of health care by going with them to doctor's appointments, coordinating care, coordinating uh, complex issues around discharges. And the most frequent uh, recent thing we did is innovatively we acquired a company and merged into our organization, Global Transitional Care Medical Group, which is the only one of its kind certified by Medicare in transitional specialty medicine. And we take patients from their homes, excuse me, from the hospital at an acute stay, uh -huh. the most complex patients, and take them home. And our nurse practitioner stay with them for 30 days, re helping them recover and helping them not readmit to the hospital because patients really don't want to end up back there. Right. So that really is the continuum of what care partners And all too is. often they do, right? Absolutely. If they're not watched at home, they don't care for themselves properly, they're right back in the hospital in acute care again. And fundamentally, they, they are. The issue is is their own compliance, right? And right. we can we can point the fingers at the three of us sitting around the table. Yeah, um, let's. But yeah, let's do that for a moment. <laughs> I know what I don't do well. Um, doesn't mean I always remember that. Right. And I think when you're unhealthy when you're trying to recover when you have dynamics in your family or your own psychosocial issues all of those prevent you from healing mm -hmm. and all of those prevent you from remembering who you are as a person the spirituality and I don't mean religion I mean the spirit of who you are is really where Rodney and I have come from wow. and that is a fundamental premise of providing medical care and support so we're going a little bit long in this segment yep. but I, I just want I can't let this go because I my sense is these other lines of business that you have gone into feel like to me they were market led they were you guys watching clients seeing a need and then figuring out you if you could help in that area is that fair i mean is that is that what you saw yes rodney you know when when going back to the original story of when i presented this to randy the continuum had everything under the sun it almost looked like we were, wanted to take over the world that wasn't what it was meant to be it was it was meant to establish a culture within a company okay. and have a number of service offerings that we can offer where we can trust that everybody's working together towards patient centered care nobody no provider is working against each other mm. which you often see uh, with the competition today right so we you know we feel very blessed with how we were led to these other opportunities and and it was with purpose and you know we're comfortable with the four that we have and we don't see ourselves ourselves going beyond there because we want to do a few things really well and that continuum gives us physicians nurses social workers caregivers cnas hhas it gives you a plethora of medical clinical and non-medical providers to wrap around patients in their homes Wow, this. Which has allowed us to actually pivot in the 18 months we've been operating. And I think pivoting and being at or ahead of the curve is really where Rodney and I, from our expertise perspective, wanted to incorporate all of that in the business model, recognizing we need to be self-aware of what's out there from a competitive standpoint, mm -hmm. but how we would also use that to differentiate us. Okay, we're going to take a stop here on Critical Mass Radio Show. I really am enjoying this conversation. When we come back, I'd like to talk about the future, a uh, few minutes living in the future. I know you guys are all running at a breakneck pace up to this point, but I think like it's going to be accelerating for you, so I, I want to get into that. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with these two after this word from me. This radio show and podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi. The, let me tell you, this is interview, hold on a second. This is interview no, number 1,415. This is podcast 1,102, but we've done over 1,400 interviews with great guests like these two gentlemen. Um, our show can be found on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, hundreds of former guests, websites whose CEO has been on the program. Since we started in 2009, we've reached several hundred thousand listeners through our live stream here on octalkradio.net, our podcast on all those platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and the other platforms that we use. Simply type in Critical Mass Radio Show into your favorite podcasting platform, and you'll get our weekly interviews with these great guests like Randy and Rodney. I said before the break I wanted you to... Talk to me about the future of the firm. You know, just give me a sense for where you see the firm going. And, Randy, if I could, maybe we'll start with you. 
So the industry in healthcare is pretty volatile. Um, you're seeing several strategies around large health systems, large insurance payers, health insurance payers, trying to cope with the changes of the Affordable Care Act and how Medicare is reimbursing. And typically, not always, but typically, the way Medicare goes the way is the way commercial insurance typically follows and tries to improve upon it. So I think we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, we built the business to last. It was our intention. But I do think there's some pivots, as I mentioned in the last segment, that will lead us to potentially be attractive, meaning attractive not only to increase our overall revenue base, but possibly somebody be inter interested in acquiring us and integrating us into their business, which allows us to have a couple of tracks, um, either working with and continuing to partner with health systems and physician medical groups and independent practice associations, or as well in parallel with insurance companies. So commercial insurance companies recognizing what we do and filling a critical component of what they're trying to solve for. Mm. And a most recent example was a large insurance company and independent practice association here in Southern California that we met with and basically looked at us and other competitors in our space in home care and said, you actually have the holy grail to the answer that I want. This is a CEO, just like Rodney and I, who said, Nobody's been, nobody's been able to present it to me. So the first one who can come out and present it to me and anyone else like me, meaning their insurance company, their, their health care insurance uh, independent practice association, will increase not only our revenues as a business, but also give them a solution that they've been looking for. And that is health care has become largely episodic. You get an episode in the hospital, you get an episode in the urgent care, you come home and somebody comes mm. visits you for an episode. But life is not episodic. Life is revolving, and right. so our model helps fill in those gaps where we actually see the patient in a unadjusted state in their real environment. Mm. And it's frightening in some hands because okay. they live in difficult situations, and in other hands, we see the beauty of who they are, and our caregivers can help them navigate through the process of their health care and their psychosocial issues that might be coupling. I'll, I'll let Rodney give well, a little more feedback. I, I want to ask a question, Rodney, on that. The, the, the episodic nature of health care leads me to worry that there are gaps between those episodes where information is improperly passed. It seems like your model sort of smooths that out. Yeah, the goal would be to integrate. I mean, you know, to, to piggyback on Randy, um, we built this to be a disruptor. And uh, if we're going to help in the defragmentation, mm -hmm. part of that bridging the gaps and finding a way to make sure that communication is seamless across any of those transitions. That's why we see us built in to either a hospital system, multiple hospital systems, or payer plans. Right, and as you said earlier, Randy, in the earlier block, sometimes the patient isn't the one that should be trusted to make sure they're doing the right thing for their own care, right? Absolutely. Especially if they're elderly or if they're ill, you can't trust them to remember if they've taken the right medicines and the right regimen and all that, right? Uh, absolutely, and I think you touched on one of the things that's critical, and that's medication and medication management. And so wondering whether or not your loved one has taken the proper pills at the proper time, at the proper dosing, is one of the fundamental issues that's plaguing healthcare today as it relates to health decline, readmission, sentinel events that really cause and cost the healthcare system a tremendous amount of money. And we don't want to see increased medications. We actually believe in decreased medications per patient. Okay. And the only way you do that is you you're able to look at all of the different specialties a patient is involved with from their healthcare perspective, right. they typically aren't talking, even in today's wow. progressive medicine. So we can actually document whether or not a patient has taken his or her medications or seeing any reactions they have to that medication, which don't often get from the patient to the doctor in that physician's office visit. And if we're able to document that, that's vital to a physician making critical decisions and pivoting that patient into a new regimen of medications or again less medications um, and, and we've seen success with that so that's one of the fundamental reasons that we've we've been in the home excellent uh, we only have a few minutes left here on critical mass radio show and podcast so I'm I'm gonna go right to the uh, next to last question which is we've talked about it a little bit but I'd like to ask you both if you could answer this question or share with my audience your core philosophy that you're using to lead and grow your firm. What is the core philosophy that you're bringing to the firm? And Rodney, how would you like to go first? Um, I'm gonna let Randy go first. Okay, there we go. Randy, <laughs> would you go first? Um, it, it's funny, we're both pausing and that's unusual for us because I think it's, it's something we think about um, quite often. And I think from uh, the, the core philosophy 
is thinking about the individual associate that we bring into the company. We started our discussion with that and how we actually prepare them. Philosophically, we hire and we treat people um, with a great deal of regard. You know, being the face of the company is often what happens with leaders. Mm -hmm. But in our company, the face of our company is each of the caregivers who are at the ground level caring for patients. They represent us. You could say they make or break us, but they actually make a difference. And I think that's one of the things that if I lie awake at night and I wonder what could we do better right. or constantly improve on, it's how we onboard, how we attract and bring caregivers and management associates as well to our team that have that same core principle that are in our mission, vision, and values. Love, mm -hmm. empathy, and compassion. Now, this might not be a Harvard white paper when you hear love, empathy, and compassion. But from our perspective, it really is. Because mm -hmm. we understand the business principles. We understand how to navigate a PL, a profit and loss statement. But you know what? Many bright, bright people do that. Yeah, and I that's... think if you can fundamentally harness individuals to be purpose driven in what they do for themselves as individuals and can transpose that onto another person by providing care, that to me is is what we need to strive for in our company. I think we focus on that as a, as a good good part of our day each day. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, he used the word purpose-driven, which is, is true. I, I used the word earlier, human connection. Mm -hmm. When we trend our powerful stories, which we see every day, um, there's so many things you can bring out of there, but when you look at it, um, really the most powerful stories happen to be when you connect two human beings and one's caring for the other and there's that impact. We've seen non-compliant patients turn compliant. We've seen people who are okay with dying and letting their disease state take over to going to finding wow. purpose again. Wow. And it's been through that connection of putting the right person in their health who, who helps them to find their smile again, who helps them to find a passion or purpose in life again and enjoys them. It's the value. The value that they see them there isn't the ADLs and the skills that Randy mentioned. It's the it's the heart. It's the fact that they feel that they're there for a reason, and and that's true love. Right. You know, that's a great way to kind of end it in a sense because as you're talking, I I can't help but think about my daughter who has a 11 month old baby, and I've watched her for 11 months now be the primary caregiver for that child and and the responsibility that it comes with. And it feels like in many ways what your firm is doing for those people on the other end of the life spectrum is that same connection that the, my daughter is giving to her daughter. It's a showing, great example. Right? Showing yeah. love and co compassion. Uh, uh, it's a human instinct in a way, if you right. look at it. Right. That's what I'm trying it, to say. It, it's, 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 it's not age-specific. It, it, it is discriminative age. And, and being able to care for someone is a fundamental um, human I think human need right. to be cared for and to have the feeling of uh, of caring for someone. Right, and it comes natural to most mothers to care for their children, and what you're doing is you're building a culture and a business where you're finding people who are free and willing to do that for what are begin as strangers, mm -hmm. but then become an important person in their life, it feels like. Definitely a calling. Wow. Okay, so if someone would like to learn more about Care Partners at Home, where would you say they go online? Maybe they want to watch these videos we've been talking about, <laughs> guys. Thanks for the opportunity, Rick, Roddy, and I really appreciate it. You can find us on our website at www.carepartners. That's Care Partners with an S. And it's a .us address, not .com, carepartners.us. Or you can call the office here at 949-556-3433. Great. Thank you very much for both of you taking the time away from what I know is a crazy busy schedule to come in here and share a bit about your firm with my audience. I truly believe it in what you're doing. I want to thank you for being friends of the community and, and welcome to the greater critical mass business community as well. Rick, thanks thank for you. the opportunity. All thank really you so much. It. We appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's been great. All right, I'd like to thank Paul Roberts, our very patient engineer for the Today Show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And our producers, who out, without whom we wouldn't be able to do this show, Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me, let's go to LinkedIn. I'm Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. By the way, my latest book, Killing Cats Leads to Rats, Mitigating the Unintended Consequences of Business Decisions, is now available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and other great booksellers in both a soft copy as well as a paperback. And soon we're going to have an audible version available for you as well. Until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction. You have